just went on a treasure hunt in the barn and I found this gem. This is a time capsule of my drafting kit from the 1980s. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. Now in this day and age, now that it's the new year, we keep seeing these videos of what's in my camera bag, what's the latest tech gear, this is what I'm using, this is the best way to use it, this is a hack for this. I thought we'd do something different today. Let's take a step back, poke through this old thing, see what's in here, and in case you were wondering how the dinosaurs designed the pyramids, maybe this will give you some insight. But before we get started, let's talk about a couple of things. Number one, you'll see that it's an old 1970s briefcase, which was my dad's. Now, back then we didn't have, you know, staples and we didn't have office supply stores and we didn't have the fancy uh, ballistic nylon bags that you see now. This was pretty much it. And there were a few other guys in my, uh, in my design class that had something similar. But we just had to carry our stuff around. This is, you know, for notebook computers, obviously. So, this is what we used. So, yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing I noticed off the bat is, has a combination. Now, fortunately, I left it in the open position. But looking at it, it may not have been a problem because looking at the number, I might have guessed what it was even though it's been so long. So let's open this up. Ooh. Wow. This takes me back. This is going to be a trip down memory lane. Oh yeah, I remember this project. In addition for a uh, house in Easton, Mass. This had to be 1992, I would say. And this is how we did it back then. It was obviously the whole point of this is to show hand drafting, but we would use, um, this looks like, uh, yeah, this looks like pencil on vellum, and then we would use uh, colored pencil to render it. So here we have, <laughs> a pay stub, 1991. Wow. Let's see. Federal rate, $7 an hour. Mm. This, I don't even remember what this is. Something about a spiral stair and, oh, all right. This was, this was an early attempt at CAD by someone. I think it's to demonstrate what the capabilities are. NEC Graphics, Earliesville, Virginia. All right, I don't even, to be honest, I don't even remember that. Well, this is a backyard of that. Anyway, yeah. Fun times. Architectural scale. Still use these today. As long as we have paper drawings, we're going to need these. Oh, this is okay. This one's a little bit different from what we usually see. We have the inches, one and a half inch equals one foot, three inches equals one foot. This one's a little different. Instead of where they usually have the three sixteenths and three thirty seconds, they put a two inch and four inch scale. This is very rare. You don't see this very often which is probably why it's still in this uh, still in this case and I never used it since then, but yeah. really kind of strange. Let's see this thing. Speed Daughter. Sounds kind of, I don't even remember this. What was this thing? Oh, I remember this now. Okay. If you look closely at this, you'll see that it's this piece of plastic that has these different line patterns in it. And what you do is, I think, I, I guess you could use this with both. Now, you wouldn't want to use this with ink because it would smudge. But you put this down with the straight edge, and then you go over it like pretty, pretty hard with a pencil. And you can get different, uh, different types of lines, dash dot, dash dot dot, center line, property line, that sort of thing. To be honest, I don't even really remember using it. I must have bought it in a clearance rack or something. But it's, oh, instructions. Let's see here. Yeah. 
Six different broken line patterns. Yeah, it's okay. It's, it's what I thought. All right. What's next? <laughs> Okay, for the record, I'm actually not that old. We did have calculators the entire time I was at school, but I did have an interest on how to use a slide roll. So that's what this is. Uh, the instructions may or may not be in here. I don't even know. But yeah, that, that's kind of funny. I don't even remember. God, it's been so long. So, yep. Slide roll. Eraser shield. So, yeah, let me just grab this now. Electric eraser. Do I have... Yeah, here we go. Take these eraser strips. Regular eraser material. Oops. Lost it. Ah, here we go. Plug it in, obviously. And it's a quick way to, instead of with a regular eraser, you just touch it to the paper and it works. It's wonder, wonders. Now, there's different kinds of erasers, of course. You can have a regular graphite eraser, which is what we use most of the time, but you can also get ones that have um, the eraser strips with that have the ink solvent in it. So it would, you could use these with uh, ink drawings also. But uh, in fact, I remember meeting someone a long time ago who was not in the design and construction industry. He was in a different industry that had nothing to do with drafting or anything like this. And I don't want to say what it is because I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm, you know, uh, demeaning another profession or anything. But it was, anyway, he, he looked at this and he thought it was the silliest thing in the world. He didn't understand it. Why would you need this? Blah, blah, blah. And it, it was ridiculous. He's never worked a day in that office or anything, so we wouldn't know. But anyway, so yeah, these were a lot of fun to use. Well, for some reason, I thought it was important to have a picture of my, uh, my car. 79 Ford Mustang. That was a good car. I don't know why that's in here. Good old film days. And in the background is my mom's 84 Ford Tempo. That's the car I learned how to drive on. <laughs> you can see it right there in the back. Oh, things that came with products that probably should have been thrown away. Draftsman's pad. Oh, here it is. Okay. Now, we used to call this a scumbag. And I know that sounds pretty silly, and that is a silly name, sure. What it is is a bag, and it kind of feels like a sock, uh, sewed up at both ends. And it's filled with these really fine eraser shavings. And what you do with this is, if you're working, you don't use this with ink, at least I never did. Um, if you're working graph, uh, graphite on vellum or graphite on trace or whatever, and it ends up smudging a lot, you can use this a couple of ways. You can either put the powder on the paper ahead of time to avoid it smudging, or when you're done, just take it and go over the paper to get rid of the smudging. And the lines that are really supposed to be there stay there, so that's not a problem. So, yeah. When they called it a scumbag, I really laughed. I thought that was crazy. So let's see what else is in here. Hmm. Guess I wasn't very good at throwing things away when they needed to be. At least I don't, doesn't look like a very straight edge. Who knows when this happened? I mean, it feels like a pretty brittle plastic. Ah, Pearl. Pearl Art Center. $2.55. Proven 
Permanent on most surfaces. Highly water resistant. Awesome. Still works, let's see. Yeah, still smells, but there's not much left to it. Another type of eraser. Let's see, did the old one fit in here? No, it used a different size. But anyway, it's a eraser that works kind of like a lead holder. In fact, let me see if I can find a lead holder. Here it is. No, that's not it. Now here's a lead holder. When I first got one of these things, I didn't think it made much sense. I was used to the, um, I was used to the mechanical pencils that you just click on the end and the lead slowly comes out where this has a completely different kind of mechanism. The LEDs, of course, are much longer than this, but got the hang of it pretty quick. And these are really cool. So on the end here, you can, it doesn't even want to move, oh, here we go. You can spin this thing on the, on the end, so you're reminded of what hardness of lead is in here. Right now it says F, I doubt that's what it really is, but. So then you take, it's lead pointer. Oh, I guess I need a little more. Oh, it really doesn't want to sharpen. Oh. So what you would do is take this. Let's just put a new lead in here. This is an E4 hardness lead, which is a pretty hard lead. I got this at Charette at MassArt. Now, Charette was a uh, drafting supply store. There were a number of them throughout Boston. There were some in Cambridge and everything. It was basically a candy store for the architecture students. Everybody loved going there because they had such cool stuff. Nowadays, of course, we get excited about software, but so let's see. Take one of those, put the rest together without breaking it. These are the two millimeter size LEDs. Won't even go the whole way. Wow, okay. I'll just do this. So then you take this pointer. There we go. Yeah, it's not very good. There we go. And they have this little, this little uh, felt thing right here to get, oops, get all the graphite dust off of it. That's a pretty good point right there. So, yeah, lead holder. So yeah, we use these obviously for uh, drafting. These are the go-to. You have like five or six of different, uh, different um, lead hardnesses. And then there's this, which is a circle maker thing. Circleometer, there we go. Circleometer. Oh, just circleometer. Okay. Hey, patent pending. Don't steal this idea. So the way this works is you've got a pin right in the middle of it, and it would stick in the drawing, and it, you know, hardly mark the drawing. It's a tiny little, tiny little thing. I don't even think I'd get hurt on this. And then you can draw different size circles, one inch, two inch, three inch. And then on the outside, it gives you, um, you know, the fraction of an inch. So they always, they're getting farther and farther apart from the center. The only problem with this is if you look real close using the pencil we just sharpened, you can see how small these holes are. And I don't know. All right. Oops. Yeah, there you go. Just broke off the end of it. But you can see how small those holes are. 
I doubt you could fit a half a millimeter lead through there. And if you do, it's going to break in a hurry. So, in fact, here we go. Regular mechanical pencil, just like I was saying. This one is a 0.3 millimeter. All right, so you can, you can fit it through, but that's, if I find a bigger one than uh, 0.3 millimeter, I'll give it a try. Um, let's see, what's next? Oh, wow. Still use these today. Wow. Pretty good for early 1990s, late 1980s. These things last a long time. More LEDs. A sleeve that looks like an engineer scale came in. Ah, here's one thing that I miss from the uh, film days. Is these little film canisters come in handy for a lot of things. There's nothing in here, but you could stick all kinds of tiny things in here and uh, not lose them. So, yeah, we don't see much of those anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to know what's on this, but unfortunately this was like five computers ago. So I have a feeling I'm never going to find out. I don't even know if they still make these drives. Maybe they do. I don't know. But be interesting to see. It's probably some boring fit up of a dentist's office or something. Uh, let's see. Ah, this is what ATM receipts used to look like. I haven't seen a Mac machine, a money access center in a long time. Uh, let's see. Amounts, balance, $218.25. Yep, sounds like me. Oh, wow. January 29th, 94. I had no idea that I was still using this case that late. Let's see. Withdraw from checking. $20. Has changed quite a bit. It doesn't say, it doesn't give you the location either. I don't know why they didn't do that back then. Well, it gives you this long-winded Mac number. I'm guessing that's code for where the location is. 2.58 p.m. 2.57 p.m. All right. Who knows where it was? Oh, okay. So let's get back to this for a second. So this is an eraser shield. You can see very, very, very thin metal. And the idea is if you want to erase something or a portion of something, you can put this right up against where you want it to stop and just go over it and you get a nice clean edge. And you can take it one step further with our little friend here, the uh, this electric eraser. If you wanted to draw a dotted line, if you want to draw a dotted line, you put the line down, stick this on top of it, and go over this with the electric eraser, and it gives you this nice consistent dotted line. It's one way to do it, but yeah, I use this a lot. I'll be honest, I made a lot of mistakes. Compass set. Looks like it's almost all there. This is literally one of the first things that I bought for drafting tools along with some of these lead holders and I'm sure the original triangles I had were long gone. Wow, that's pretty stiff. I haven't used this in a while. So, I don't know what happened here. Um, looks like there's a piece missing. Doesn't even want to come out. I'll bet what happened was I needed to put a uh, put an ink tip on that, and I don't even know where that is. In fact, that's one thing I don't see in here. That's kind of disappointing. I had the uh, the seven pen um, ink pen set, and that's not in here. That's a real shame. I wanted to demonstrate that. That was really cool. But let's see. We got this. We got 
dividers, which is really more of a mechanical engineering or industrial engineering thing. Then we have an extension beam. What you would do here is, oh, it's already up, the pin's already up. If you need to do a wide arcing, wide sweeping arc, pop that in there and without breaking it, open that bad boy up and boom. And now instead of all the sweat and toil, we have computers doing all the work for us. So there's that. Yeah, there's one other thing in here, which this is a ruling pen attachment. And I never use this. And I guess what you would do here is dip this in ink and you get a bead of ink in here and you, it's, so it works kind of like a fountain pen, but I don't know, I never did that. The one unused piece in this whole thing. Then you have um, things to hold different leads instead of using the full size lead. Let's see, what's this? Alexander's Market. Well, I bought something for $1.78. $11.7. Yeah, thanks. They're probably giving me the year. Small architectural scale. Alvin. Yeah, I remember this. Engine divided. Small compass. I guess if I'm ever on a golf course and I need to draw an arc, Use my golf pencil, stick it in here. I don't even know how I got this. Certainly don't recall ever using it, but hey. Something to do with old golf pencils, I guess. Oh, here we go. Oh, look at this. This is when stamps were 22 cents. Seashells, 440. Oh, wait, there's still one in here. This, is, this isn't the adhesive kind either. It's the kind where you have to lick the back and put it on. So this is really old. Maybe I'll save this. Huh. Huh. Brush so we can... Where'd it go? After you're done using this thing, brush it all off. Eraser, shavings. Now this thing... This is before we had binder clips, where if you're working on a certain scale, like say I'm designing a house or a detail or something, or I'm using quarter inch, then you take this, put that on top so you can find it again quickly. Now, of course, today we use binder clips for that, but I thought that was kind of cool at the time. Now getting to the bottom of this. Let's see. Ah, here we go. This silly looking thing is for colored pencils. If you're doing colored pencil renderings, you know, you sharpen the pencil down, you get to the bottom of it and you still have some left and you don't want to throw it away, but it's too short to use. You pop the end in here and you can still use it, which uh, I used it a few times. In fact, I still have my box of colored pencils. Maybe I'll grab that left next if we have time. Ah solid graphite pencil. Instead of a pencil that uses uh, uses wood with a graphite core, this thing's solid graphite. So you can sharpen this thing in a sharpener, let it get as dull as you want. You can do lines, you can do shading. Yeah, these are really cool. Combine this with a sketchbook. And does, oh, 2B. Okay, so actually this is a pretty hard lead. I wonder if I have any others. More different uh, Two millimeter leads for our lead holder. Ah, oh, here we go. Another lead holder. This is one of the first ones I ever had. This one does not have the thing on the end that tells you uh, what the hardness of the lead is. I guess you got to use tape or something. 
you know, all these are two millimeter, and they make three millimeter ones too. I have one, I use that for uh, sketching. Let's see. Um, oh, oh, wait, where is it? Here it is. So I do have one technical pen. And this one is a 0.8 millimeter. This is a pretty good size, uh, pretty good size pen. 0.8 is pretty good bold line. I used to have a set of these things, and you'd have to. Now this has a hexagonal head on it, and you would take a tool and unscrew it. And you'd have to clean these things on a regular basis because the India ink that you use with this does nothing but clot. So you got to stay on top of this and keep them clean if you want to avoid the frustration of having, you know, a pen stop in the middle of drawing a line, that's really annoying. I don't know if you could hear that, but super glue, completely, <laughs> completely frozen. <laughs> Let's see, regular eraser. What's this? Uh, let's see, I don't even know what this is, but whatever it is, I paid $15. Oh, $15 for it, it better be something good. Ah, okay, here we go. This gets back to, uh, gets back to what I was saying. This is what these, this is what these things look like when you take them out. Now, you, there's two varieties of these things. They come with a stainless steel tip, and you can get jewel tips. For these things which I thought was you know silly why would you need that these things work good enough and then I think it was either Charette or Utrecht or one of those stores had uh, had the jewel tips on sale or on clearance or something so I'm like what the heck I may as well try it yeah that was a big difference the, those the jewel tips are like the true professional ones and I couldn't believe that that uh, how true the hype was I was so used to you know not believing the hype for anything this is when Snapple came in bottles that look more like soda bottles. So that's about it for this. Now if we move on to here. So we have drafting templates. What is this? Oh, here we go. Traffic symbols. Streetcar. Bus, trailers and vans, what's this say? Trail panel, small trucks, weird curvy thing. Ah, pedestrians, yeah. Ah, one, one inch equals 20 feet, that's what this is. So I guess if you're doing site plans, you have to have a different one of these for different scales. I must have got this in the clearance rack because God knows you can never have enough templates to draw the United States of America. Oh, and Mexico. Jiffy template, yeah. Well, I use this one a little more often. This is for furniture and such. Grand piano. What else do we have here? King size bed. Double bed. Sure is different today. You just move 3D blocks around and it updates in real time and everything. Plumbing fixtures template. This was useful. All kinds of different toilets and showers and things. Different scales too. One, one it looks like one half and one quarter. Um, excuse me one half. Looks like one quarter and one eighth inch so you didn't have to buy more than one. Steel beams. Must have got this in the clearance rack because I don't remember using this very much. And this is only good for half inch scale so if you had different scale drawing you have to use something else. Ah, here we go. Every now and then I do a really wild and crazy design and I'd have to Use a compound curve to draw it. I don't know if you can see oh, it's broken. Yeah, that's not surprising. This is pretty, pretty flimsy plastic. I don't know if you can see this, but the plastic has all kinds of crazing in it, which, uh, you know, plexiglass, whatever. 
I also had an adjustable curve, which is basically this flexible thing. You could just make whatever shape you wanted out of it, but I don't know what happened to that. North arrows. Freehand lettering guide, which I gotta say that I was gonna show you this too. This is another type of lettering guide where you can do move this to adjust the the height of the line of the um, letters you want to draw. This is a real pain in the neck to use. I remember using this one a lot more. You can either do quarter inch, three sixteenths, five thirty seconds, eighth. This was much easier to use than that. Just done. Let's see. Yeah, here's one I never used much. Dental office planning. Lettering template. Architects and builders. Oh, eighth inch. Eighth inch template, extra one if I ever needed it. Okay, so what we would do with these is if we had to make a title, or you know, use something other than hand lettering. These are press-on letters. You would just find the letter you want. You'd never have enough of the correct letters you might imagine. And then you just press it onto the uh, paper with what's called a burnisher, which is, you know, it's a pen, but it has like this ball on the end and it's made for doing stuff like this. So let's see, this one, alpha better letter. Cute. Another alpha better letter. See, so it had like tons of W's and maybe it didn't use all this one, but yeah, it gives you the instructions right there and how to use it. Pretty obvious, self-explanatory. Kind of like uh, putting the directions on a box of Pop-Tarts, I suppose. But yeah, you can see some letters use more than others. You get the idea. Now it's as difficult as using a typewriter. Another pay stub, seven dollars an hour. Timesheets, CVS. That was a big client of ours. CVS. What's this? <laughs> Breakup letter. <laughs> I'm gonna put this back here. That's a story for another time. Ah, looks like the last thing. Adjustable triangle. Hey, I want to have the garage t offset 20 degrees from the main line of the house. Sure, here you go. So yeah, this was, uh, I thought this was really neat the first time I saw one of these things. So yeah, you can do 45 through, well, zero really. And then just turn it the other way if you want to go the other way. So, so yeah. That's it. Sandpaper for sharpening lead, that's another thing. What else do we have here? Fountain Pentel. Hmm. Oh wow, it still works. Sign pen. They still make these today. These are really good for making bold, uh, bold lines on sketch paper. And yeah, that's about everything. So maybe in another video, I'll go over to my drafting table over there and show some of the stuff in action. Now, the unfortunate thing is that, to my knowledge, I don't think they still teach hand drafting in school, which makes sense because compared to the way it's done today, it is a very um, time and labor intensive um, way of doing things compared to just, um, just you know, doing things with computer. The one thing that's never changed is we need to give someone a set of instructions on how to build something. This gives you an idea of how it was done in the old days today it's much easier using computer and other uh, other ways to do it but um, 
yeah, times change and the methods along with it. So hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you want to watch more, hit like and uh, hit subscribe and I'll try to start uploading on a more regular basis. And uh, thanks for watching.